Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. You know, I wasn't speaking to you during the commercial break because I don't want to waste anything. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Glenn, uh, you know, I go, just go. <laughs> so, yeah, good, good morning, Steph. Let's Hi. start with this. Um, trite though this may be, it's always darkest before the dawn, yeah. right? And we are about to just throw the justice floodlights on in a couple of ways. One, in criminal courtrooms up and down the eastern seaboard where Donald Trump's big fat orange butt will be convicted. <laughs> Two, in November 2024 at the ballot box. I don't want to be cavalier, but uh, Biden won by 7 million votes last time. He'll win by 15 million this time. So. This too shall pass. This will be yesterday's news. But there's no escaping the fact that it's some really bad news. Both yeah. the special counsel report that really was Comey-esque, let's gratuitously beat up on somebody who we are saying did nothing wrong. I, I remember that, using the word careless. It wasn't even, and that was an opinion that wasn't even correct. <laughs> there actually and was, and, and yeah. not only that, when he says things like Joe Biden couldn't even remember his uh, the date of his son's mm. death, Joe Biden said, when he asked me that question, I was thinking to myself, it's none of your damn business. Yeah. But special counsel, her, decides to interpret that as a failure of memory and then gratuitously put it in a report mm -hmm. where it has no business being. So... This and the other thing that to frame this issue, Steph, you know, it's really pretty upsetting that Comey investigates Hillary and all but tanks her candidacy on the eve of the yeah. election. Yeah. Her investigates Biden and says gratuitously nasty and potentially damaging things. Well, Mike Pence got investigated, too. Thank you. For his handling of classified documents. We didn't hear a peep right. Thank about you. negative commentary about him. Yeah. It feels like there's a pattern I, there. I mean, I you know, we talk about this all the time that I understand a lot of, you know, Alison Gill's, you know, some of her defenses of Garland. You know, I think you've been really um, impatient as I've been. But I mean, uh, get your take on Amy Siskin said Merrick Garland picked this Republican prosecutor who tried to damage Biden with this 300 page report despite his innocence. Again, Gar Garland tries to appease. It never works. I, what is Merrick Garland's role? This, this is, first of all, he didn't have to release this. Now he's put Biden in a horrible position, as I said earlier. Biden can't fire him now, or it looks, but, but this is just egregious, isn't it, that he allowed this political Fox script to be released? Yeah, he didn't have to release it. If he did, he could have redacted it to take mm -hmm. yeah. unfair commentary out of it. Listen, and I understand that sometimes you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But yeah. if that is the case, then just don't do the wrong thing. Yeah. Do the right thing. And it seems by default he is forever doing the wrong thing. And it may be born of good intentions. I don't want to be perceived as political. But what you're doing ultimately is political because you are, you know, doing the wrong thing with respect to a particular candidate. That's wrong. Yeah. Well, in the middle of an election year, mm -hmm. isn't that supposed to be the whole thing the DOJ avoids? In an years. election year, you're, you're speculating about, as if you're a doctor, about Biden's age or what the jury might think or, you know, like, what, all of that's irrelevant. And also, Glenn, can we just talk about the findings? Uh, one page says willfully retain, another page it says no evidence he willfully retain. I mean, this just strikes me as a total piece of garbage, this report. Yeah, it's a bit of a hot mess. There are some inconsistencies. There are some, there's some gratuitous commentary that's not only unfair, but maybe inaccurate mm -hmm. because her interprets things one way. And guess what? He's not necessarily right. Um, you know, on the willful retention, you can say, OK, well, there's some indication he knew he had some classified documents back in 2018 or whatever the original year was. Um, so you I think you can appropriately talk about his retention of those documents. But just because it was willful doesn't mean that there was criminal intent that w intent that went along with it. And let me tell you, Steph, I, this is no defense of the many people who took with them classified information, whether advertently, inadvertently, right. knowingly, unknowingly, when they left decades of government right. service. But I would say back then 
it was something of a different time. People may have taken notes in their capacity as a government official, and those notes included some classified information. And they weren't taking it with them to use it nefariously, right. to hold it hostage, to sell it to foreign actors. They didn't then retain it when the National Archives, the FBI, the Department of Justice, and a federal grand jury came a calling saying giving it yeah. back. These things really are like night and day. And attaching the words classified information to all circumstances and concluding that they all involve the same conduct and the same intent just does a disservice to the whole process. And, you know, once again, Glenn, let's talk about the media for a minute. Our friend uh, Angelo Carasone said the media is going to, of course, completely mess up the reporting here. But one big thing the media uh, sh um, won't but should note, a report like this written by a counsel from the opposing party would not see the light of day in a Trump administration, let alone even exist yeah. in the first place. I, so we get bit in the ass by trying to be the good guys all the time, by trying to be overwhelmingly fair and transparent, right? Well, Steph, would uh, would Bill Barr or any Trump appointed attorney general appoint as special counsel a Democrat to look into the misconduct of Donald Trump? Of course not. They would have, you know, ensured the outcome with the appointment. That's what the Bill Barrs and the Donald Trumps of the world do. Right. So um, all I can say is. This is a bad look for a lot of reasons, but I do believe it will be yesterday's news. And I think more importantly, it should be yesterday's news because the top line takeaway is that Joe Biden did nothing criminal. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden did nothing that approaches what Donald Trump did and continues to do yeah. in the classified documents arena and in undermining our confidence in American elections. So we will put this behind us. Yeah, I just it's just I, I think it is. You're right. It triggers our 2016 PTSD that you're like, how is this allowed to happen? You don't even have to be a lawyer to go. You either say charging, not charging. You don't go, but, ah, but here's how I think I feel about that. And here's what I, some of my, you know, opinions. It's just that it's not the way the and law Steph, is I, supposed I think to work. It hurts. It hurts all the more because it comes on top of yesterday's Supreme Court argument. Yeah, right? let's talk about that, because that obviously got <laughs> overshadowed. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I. I thought I, Chris Hayes made the same point on Twitter that I've been making. He said, oh, wow, look who's suddenly very skeptical of states' rights and the power to regulate their own elections. The court's conservatives. I mean, and you pointed out to see Clarence <laughs> Thomas sitting there. You know, Chris Hayes also said, boy, they sure didn't. The conservative justices sure didn't want to talk about January 6th. <laughs> you know, and you said, I want to see a judicial conflict. If Clarence Thomas participates, which he did, obviously, in Trump's disqualification, if he rules what happened on 1-6 was an insurrection, that will further incriminate his wife, who may have assisted it. That's an actual conflict, <laughs> right? I mean, I it just, I the, yesterday between this news and watching Clarence or hearing Clarence Thomas just made me crazy. I mean, talk, talk about your impressions of the Supreme Court yesterday. Yeah, there was so much about that Supreme Court argument that, that upset me and that made me crazy. Um, one is the state's rights angle. I couldn't believe that the justices had the gall to mention that if they allow the states to run their elections, as the Constitution provides mm -hmm. they can, yeah. and they allow states to qualify and disqualify candidates, as the Constitution allows, they can. There will be what? Inconsistency among the states. One of the justices said inconsistency bordering on chaos. Well, excuse me, a little over a year ago, you revoked women's constitutional privacy mm -hmm. rights to make their own reproductive health decisions. You threw it to the 50 states. And what do we have? Massive inconsistency, indeed, inconsistency bordering on deadly chaos like down in texas with what they're doing to yeah. women but nobody gave a hoot about inconsistency back then but when it comes to keeping donald trump on the ballot we're all concerned with the states doing it differently as the constitution provides they can and they must this is hypocrisy run wild and one other point on the J6 point, Chris Hayes tweeted, uh, twice now the court has started to get into the question of whether Trump actually is guilty of insurrection, and twice conservative justices have swooped in to completely cut off the conversation, first Rock Roberts, then Gorsuch. And he said one thing is clear, the conservative justices do not want to talk about January 6th. Um, 
Boy, I wish one of the lawyers had just kept bringing up Ginny Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. But, but you know what? You know what, Steph? Nobody, none of the justices pushed back on the fact, on the reality that Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. Right. There was no, you know, rising chorus that, oh, no, no, Donald Trump didn't engage in insurrection. It felt to me like that was a given. Indeed, it was a given because a Colorado yeah. trial court, after a, a trial on the merits, concluded, found, ruled that he did. The Colorado Supreme Court affirmed that, and we saw the insurrection with our own eyes. So everybody seemed to agree, if only tacitly, quietly, that, yeah, Donald Trump engaged in insurrection, but what does that mean? Here's what it means. It means that the Constitution says, unyieldingly, unforgivingly, and without qualification, he's disqualified. Yeah. But you know what they did yesterday, Steph? They put details over democracy. Yes. They were ruminating about the semantic interplay between the word office and officer and office holder. And they put details over democracy because they're, yeah. the inescapable conclusion was Donald Trump engaged in insurrection yeah. and, and the Constitution disqualifies him. That didn't seem to matter <laughs> yeah. to them. I, you know, and I, they're not about, I think attention's been paid. These are Republicans mm -hmm. and independents that brought this suit. Exactly. This was not Democrat. I, I love this 91-year-old Colorado Republican, right, who's brought this suit, uh, referenced the existential threat to democracy and invoked Nazi Germany's Hitler when explaining why she got involved. She said, you have to remember, as old as I am, I was born in the Great Depression. Uh, I lived through World War II. I remember Hitler. This is Norma Anderson. She said, I remember my cousin was uh, with then-President Eisenhower when they opened up the concentration camps. I mean, I understand protecting democracy. Um, recalling when she watched uh, J6 on her TV, she said, they're trying to overthrow the government, is what I was thinking. Um, you know, as someone whose dad was a prosecutor at Nuremberg, I'm just like, God bless this lady, you know, for reading yeah. a history book or two. Um, one analyst said the Republicans on the Supreme Court have shown they have no problem ignoring the obvious meaning of laws that conflict with their party's political interests. Uh, Donald Trump anticipated a moment like this one when he installed his right wing supermajority. He thinks that these are his justices on the court to do his bidding. And I guess we're going to see if that's true, but it's, it certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, and let me touch on Norma Anderson, the 91-year-old Republican retired legislator who was like Speaker of the House yeah. in, uh, yeah. in Colorado, who was the majority leader in the Colorado Senate, and who said, I resigned from the party in the age of Trump, and then I rejoined the party when he left. Why? Because I am a Republican, and they are not. Yeah. And boy, she fought. She fought, and she fought. And I said, you know, in a world, if I could say anything to the Republicans, in a world of Jim Jordans and Josh Hawley's and Mike Johnson's and Lindsey Graham's, damn it, be a Norma Anderson. Amen. Be yeah. a real Amen. Republican. Stand up and fight against autocracy and dictatorship and fascism. But then the other thing that you mentioned with the with the justices, Steph, yeah. when I heard Brett Kavanaugh say, wait a minute, wait a minute, if we allow Donald Trump to be taken off the ballot, it will disenfranchise voters. And you know what not a single justice cared about? The fact that Donald Trump's conduct on and around January 6th was designed to and intended to disenfranchise thank 80 you. million voters. Mm -hmm. Again, the hypocrisy, oh, thank you. naked, blatant uh, hypocrisy was just disgusting. Okay, do you look quickly? Let's uh, try to end on a happy note. Do you believe, as you know, obviously a lot of experts do, uh, like you do, that uh, the Supreme Court will not hear the immunity thing and the trial will proceed in the spring? Is that your they better not hear it because there's no reason for them to hear it. Right. The Constitution itself, here is the marquee clause in the Constitution that lays to rest the absolute immunity nonsense. The Constitution says, even if a president is impeached in the House and convicted by the Senate, Senate, he can still be prosecuted. How in the world can you tease out of that language that a president can't be prosecuted yeah. when even if he's impeached, the Constitution says he is subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment. He can be prosecuted. I never have confidence in the right-wing block of the Supreme Court, but I do believe they will shoot down the absolute immunity nonsense. The only question is, do they accept it for review, stop the trial dead in his tracks, and run out the clock until the next election, doing a favor, though, for Donald Trump? Or do they say, we're not touching it because there's no issue for us to resolve? 
That's the right answer. Yeah. Um, real quick, uh, Jack Smith has filed a motion for Judge Cannon to reconsider her recent ruling that would unseal witness names on the substance of their testimony, putting them at significant risk of immediate threats and intimidation. So <laughs> this is not a happy, clappy note. Judge Cannon, go. <laughs> yeah. At some point, I hope um, Jack Smith grows as tired of Judge Cannon's um, bias in favor of Donald Trump as we all have from day one and and seeks her removal or maybe appeals one of the rulings that she made that is unsupportable to the 11th circuit and that kind of gets the challenges going and ultimately culminates in a motion to recuse to kick her off the case so Uh, i hope we're going to get there but i'm not 100 percent sure we are a grueling day on the justice front you know what you should do you should go on a mediterranean cruise two dream boats on a dream boat that's (laughs) glenn kirshner and frank flaguzzi the cruise we will link to it Uh love you glenn (laughs) love you steph thanks see you guys thanks bye